it, it's tough to think about what's been in my family for well over 100 years not being here in 20. Have you ever wondered where the water that you drink and use in your everyday life comes from? What about the water used to grow the food that's on your dinner table? For many people in the United States, the answer is the Ogallala Aquifer. The Ogallala Aquifer is the largest freshwater aquifer in the Western Hemisphere, spanning almost 175,000 miles beneath eight states in the Midwest. However, chronic overuse of the aquifer has put it, and the livelihoods of the farmers who depend on it, in danger. In order to understand why the aquifer is at risk, we should first cover the basics. Aquifers are underground rock layers that contain reservoirs of water. This water can be brought to the surface through springs, wells, or pumps. But in order for aquifers to sustain a water supply, they must be regularly replenished by rain and melted snow that seeps into the ground. Year after year, the High Plains region is plagued by extreme drought cycles. After the Dust Bowl, new technology was developed to allow water stored inside the Ogallala Aquifer to be brought to the surface and used for drinking and irrigation. The problem is, nature cannot replenish the groundwater in the aquifer as quickly as we're extracting it. As a result, farmers are overdrafting the aquifer. Almost one third of its water has already been depleted. The water contained in aquifers is important, as more than 50% of people in the U.S. use groundwater for drinking. Additionally, over one-fourth of cattle, corn, cotton, and wheat produced in the U.S. depends on water from the Ogallala. If the aquifer is depleted, it could take thousands of years to replenish the water. This means lower farm exports, higher meat prices, and the lasting damage to rural communities. There is no way to start over once the water is gone. We have only one chance to preserve the aquifer. Global warming has only made things worse. As the Great Plains become hotter and drier, Midwest farmers must rely more on water drawn from wells. At the same time, recharge rates will decline, meaning it will take longer for water to be replenished after use. Global warming will also contribute to extreme weather patterns that endanger the aquifer. Researchers have found that, in a severe drought, water levels in the aquifer could decrease by as much as 30 feet. Historically, plots of land have been a source of pride for owners living on the high plains. Today, it's nearly impossible for families to continue their agricultural legacies. Brant Peterson is a fifth-generation farmer from Stanton County, Kansas. In 1939, his great-grandfather helped to create one of the first irrigation wells in the county. Today, the yields from Brant's wells have declined by more than 50%, and three of his wells have run completely dry. His only option for conserving water is to reduce the number of acres he irrigates, diminishing his livelihood and the viability of his family's farm. Legislators are not treating this problem with the urgency it deserves. The challenge lies in balancing human demands, economic growth, and the need to conserve natural resources. Many water management committees have accepted depletion as inevitable, calling their work a postponing of catastrophe. Current plans for managing the aquifer suggest using 50% of the remaining water over the next 50 years, but economists project that this plan will make farm operations less profitable. By the end of the 50 years, farms will be worth just 23% of their current value, and many will go out of business entirely. The plan also fails to extend the life of the aquifer. This plan is not a solution. Convincing large groups of farmers to limit their water use is difficult. Water is a public good, so individual farmers have little incentive to conserve it. Despite this, some farmers are taking it upon themselves to limit water use. However, this is not enough. To even approach a level of sustainability, Kansas farmers would have to reduce the number of acres of land they irrigate by 50%. Why does all of this matter? How does it affect you? When the Ogallala Aquifer runs dry, farmers will lose their livelihoods, meat prices will skyrocket, and rural communities will face lasting damage. But this won't just affect people living on the plains. Millions of other Americans will also suffer, as their food sources decrease with each lost farm. Billions of dollars will need to be invested in new water transport systems, and the U.S. will be forced to depend heavily on other nations for food and resources. What can we do to prevent the destruction of the Ogallala Aquifer and the collapse of a major component of the United States economy? We must change the way we think and the way we live. We must start viewing our planet for what it is, our one and only home. This means taking care of our environment, not just for ourselves, but for our children and grandchildren. We need to become a more conscientious society, one that doesn't outsource our most basic needs, one that can grow local food on smaller plots of land rather than importing food from massive industrial farms, one that is aware of the resources it uses and the waste it produces, and one that doesn't use resources faster than they can be naturally renewed. We must hold ourselves accountable for our role in this ecosystem, and we must start today.